Hello friends, welcome back to the general surgery lecture series. Today we are going to talk about a topic from vascular surgery which is frequently asked as a short note in both the undergraduate and postgraduate exams. So today's topic is Reynolds phenomenon. Vasoconstriction is a normal physiological response to cold temperature. When there is an exaggeration of this normal physiological response leading to episodic pallor or cyanosis of the fingers in response to cold or emotional stress, this is known as a Reynolds phenomenon. Now let us see the types of Reynolds phenomenon. They are basically of two types, primary which is also known as idiopathic or Reynolds disease and there is secondary which is also known as Reynolds syndrome. Now let us see the causes of secondary Reynolds phenomenon that is Reynolds syndrome. Most commonly it is due to connective tissue disorders like scleroderma, SLE, rheumatoid arthritis and Jogren syndrome. It may be also due to occlusive arterial disease as in atherosclerosis, thromboangitis obliterans or thoracic outlet syndrome. Certain drugs like beta blockers and cocaine can also lead to Reynolds syndrome. There might be underlying malignancy like multiple myeloma or leukemia which may be responsible for this Reynolds syndrome. Hematological conditions like polycythemia rubra vera and cryoglobulinemia are the common causes of secondary Reynolds syndrome. We will now see the pathogenesis of this Reynolds phenomenon. It is mainly due to increased sensitivity of the alpha receptors on the vessel wall and also due to endothelial dysfunction which leads to decrease in the nitric oxide or increase in the endothelium leading to vasoconstriction. This image taken from Rutherford Vascular Surgery shows the pathogenesis. We will now see the clinical features. Usually the Reynolds phenomenon lasts for less than 1 minute and not more than 10 to 20 minutes. Due to vasoconstriction, initially there is blanching and then their capillaries start dilating. So there is dusky appearance followed by cyanosis. This is due to the presence of deoxygenated blood. And then when the arterioles dilate, there is red engorgement. The primary and the secondary Reynolds phenomenon can be differentiated clinically with the following points. The primary Reynolds phenomenon usually involves both the hands, whereas the secondary can also involve the toes, which is not seen in primary. The primary is usually painless, whereas the secondary has pain, usually in the rewarming phase. We don't see any gangrene or necrosis commonly in primary, but these are commonly seen in the secondary. Now let us see the diagnosis of this Reynolds phenomenon. The patients usually give a classical history. Then we go for a duplex scanning for the vascular flow. We can go for a finger systolic blood pressure test or a cold challenge test. Both of these are provocative tests. We will now discuss the management. We can prevent the precipitation of this Reynolds phenomenon by maintaining warmth this can be done by ceramic impregnated gloves which are available and the patient is advised to avoid nicotine. The treatment of this condition usually involves medical therapy in the, as the first line. The medical therapy includes calcium channel blockers like nifedipine, alpha blockers like prazosin, nitrates in the form of topical nitroglycerin, bosentan which is an endothelin receptor antagonist and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and ARBs. Invasive therapies include botulinum toxin injection, sympathetic block which will cause vasodilatation, similarly sympathectomy can also be done and transcutaneous nerve stimulation. So this completes our brief discussion on the Reynolds phenomenon. Feel free to drop your feedback in the comment section and stay tuned to this channel for further discussion. Thank you for watching this video.